Hi, my name is Matthijs Dieriks. I'm a music composer and sound designer for games. Well, especially with this last project, it was a bit of a disaster in the beginning. Because not only did we not know where the player would go, what he would do, um, we didn't even know what kind of world would be created because this game is creating worlds and levels on the fly. So every time you uh, start a new world in the game, it's it's completely new. It's it's uh, different for for everybody, and you get uh, difficulties with uh, especially uh, repeating the same music over and over again. For instance, at the beginning we uh, had the idea to have several uh, a, a separate themes for uh, different landscapes. For instance, when you're in a desert, you want to hear some kind of desert music. I, I, I don't we know what desert music <laughs> is. Yeah, but the, the, the game could create a world that consists entirely of deserts. So if you have a theme for a desert, then only that theme would play all the time. So we were uh, constantly thinking about ways to circumvent the same music from playing over and over and over again because you know, like, we weren't in control. There wasn't a fixed world that we knew, oh, now they're going to spend an hour in the desert, they're going to spend two hours in the forest, and then, there'll be, uh, then, then they'll climb a mountain or something. They can spend one day, right? In one you, level. They, they could go everywhere. The, 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 the game could you know, like come up with weird sets of, of uh, um, biomes, as, as we call them. So one of the things we... Uh, um, prevented the music from becoming too boring too quickly is a very simple one which is just compose a lot more music so there's hours and hours of music in the game just to have m multiple different themes playing at several different uh, uh, times and, and, and places in, in the game that was one of the issues that we had to solve. And another one is, um, you know, like you have this really relaxed music, for instance, and then suddenly um, the, the player is engaging with enemies or, or creatures are popping up and he's almost about to die. And then you got this obnoxious music, really happy and all that, and nothing going, nothing going on. So we had to come up with an adaptive system. So the music adapts to the to what the player is doing and what they are experiencing. And also the overlaps, because there's a lot of sound design around, right? Like yeah. if they, I, I, I don't know, <laughs> if they have doing something uh, that makes a lot of noise and the music overlapping the noise, and you also have to predict it somehow. Yeah, so you, you, you have to restrain yourself a bit. Uh, you, you can't use, you know, like the f always the full spectrum of, uh, you know, like a whole orchestra all the time. You have to be a bit sparse every now and then. I don't think you have to be too strict in, in, in those areas because it, you, you, because if you really want to rule out all of the bad possible things going to happen, you end up with a silent game. Yeah. Because you just cannot predict everything. You have to try and accommodate as many scenarios as possible and then just let it go and just let it happen. And sometimes you get this wonderful happy accidents where uh, the music wasn't really intended for this scenario, but it's playing and it's behaving perfectly and it's syncing up with what the player is doing and it really feels like oh yeah yeah this 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 is you know like this custom made soundtrack for you and 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 when it comes together it really creates this special feeling and sometimes it's by accident but we try to push it a bit that way did you play a lot of times your your game yes because you probably cannot stand the music anymore you, you heard it well, so many times 
you would say that, but <laughs> you still enjoy it. I, I, I actually still enjoy it. Yeah, I, and I, probably is that randomness. You never know which piece is going no, to no, appear. No, no, no. That's that that that's one of the charms. But um, I also implemented the music myself uh, in the in, w with the tools in and 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 I pushed it to the repository. So so the the how would you describe it? The game sort of lives in the cloud. The, the source code and everything I add to it is being pushed to that cloud. And, you know, like with big productions, uh, as a composer, you don't need to worry about that. It's just you send your stamps, you send your audio files and somebody else implements it. But I actually like implementing it myself because, um, especially with adaptive uh, music, uh, I, I want to be in complete control of how uh, the music behaves in the game. We had this camping song, uh, which was a, a bit of a, a guitar around the campfire song. And then I started playing the game. And it was an absolute disaster. Um, the thing is, you, when you go camping, the idea was people spent, you know, like, uh, two or three minutes, and the song was about, I think, two minutes, two minutes long. But you go camp and um, you push a button that says skip the night or rest during the night. You wake up refreshed and you continue on your journey. And that whole process takes five to 10 seconds. So what happened was uh, when you started camping, the music that was playing in the background was uh, uh, cut short, fade out, faded out, which was already a bit annoying. Then you started camping, then you hear the first few bars of this guitar, it's nice, but you quit camping and then the music quit again. And then another piece of music started playing. So you would hear three different bits of three different kinds of music within a minute and that's super annoying and i was like oh no we we definitely have to change this and i would not have uh, discovered that if i would just go like you know like, here's a camping song here's a song for a desert here's a song for uh, uh traversing uh, a swamp or, or or whatever only whilst playing the game yourself a lot you discover what the music actually does and when it works and when it doesn't work. And I changed so many uh, of the songs because of the fact that they behaved in such a way in the game that, that was unexpected. So I, I really feel that if possible, as a composer, you should play the game during development as much as possible. Uh -huh. And do you have any way, do you talk to the developers? Do you have any input or you can tweak a few things? Yeah, I, I, I do have real ideas on game design, but we the, the game had uh, their own game designers and I didn't want to be, you know, like just another opinion. But sometimes I felt like um, I, this is important and they need my input. Um, and sometimes I, at, at, well, most of the input I provided was, you know, like how to implement audio, how to implement the music and when should we switch and when it should be silent and yeah. stuff like that. And, uh, I had most interaction with the art director because we feel we we feel we are sort of you know like the audio visual axis of uh, uh, the game you have the interaction which is basically what the game is and then you have the audio and the visuals uh, supporting the interaction uh, but it's so important that what i do as a composer is Strength, yeah, yeah, it's strengthening the visuals. It, it, it should be really compatible. It should really, you know, like be part of the same foundation. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, there's more to watch.